Shalom on the Sabbath day. Welcome to the Philadelphia Shabbat Assembly. Shalom. Today is the fourth day of the fifth month of the year 5783, according to Yahuwah's calendar, mm -hmm. and the full moon being the new moon. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, don't agree, and that's fine. We don't have a disagreement with you. And in, when you go to Enoch, and, you know, we, we read all that, we want to make sure you know that we do have access to Enoch. <clears throat> and when I read all that, I see that just as much pointing towards the full moon as I do when I read the whole chapter in context and not just pull that one verse. So, you know, a, a lot of people right now have different ideas on how the calendar is to be calculated whether or not we use the moon at all, or whether or not, you know, we uh, use the full moon, the crescent, or no moon at all. Or just the equinox. Or just, you know, no. so whatever way you calculate it, right now we're all doing it by faith. Amen. And as Paul or Shaul said, you know, we're seeing through a glass darkly, okay, or mm -hmm. we're not seeing clearly. And when, he, when our Hamashiach or our Messiah comes back for the millennial reign, he's going to put us all straight. You know, whoever's right or whoever's wrong, who knows? Maybe none of us are correct. But everybody is so sold on their way of keeping the calendar that they want to act like you're out of order if you don't do it the same way they do. And we don't believe that, all, that way at all here at the Philadelphia Assemblies. Just so that you know, we can disagree on some points and agree on the major points and be just fine. Okay, so that's my little spiel for the day. So today it's also August the 5th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar and the seventh day Sabbath. And again, there's many out there that keep a rotating or lunar Sabbath. And if that's your persuasion and you're fully persuaded in that, we don't have a problem with that. But we're not going to be persuaded by your opinions, okay? N nor should you by ours, okay, to make that even right. and clear. So today's message is the circumcision of the heart by faith. You know, we've talked to brethren, and, you know, some people will say that you have to have both. Now, I would agree that that's, that's a good idea to have both, circumcision to the flesh and of the heart. But if you don't have circumcision of the heart, going and getting yourself circumcised in the flesh is not going to help you a bit. Okay, Circumcision in the flesh is trimming away of the foreskins in our flesh, Okay, which is actually denying ourselves some pleasure in the flesh. Now, I don't want to get too graphic, but that is exactly what that represents. So for us to have a circumcised heart, we need to have that fleshy, part of the heart skin pick, uh, clipped away and be after the spirit and not after the flesh. Okay, that's the whole purpose of our teaching today, just so that we make that clear. And we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer as we always do. We're going to stand and face the temple in Jerusalem or where it was and where it's prophesied to be again, the place where our father, Yahuwah, Amen. chose to place his name there. Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, we praise you in all things. Father, we thank you for the breath of life and another chance at another day. And, and, and we want to enjoy every day in the fullest because we know it's a blessing from you. We're not promised tomorrow. Father, we, we thank you for your Sabbath day that we believe you set apart and sanctified from the foundation of the world and that we are here gathered on that day Father, to praise and to cherish and lift you up, Father. And again, we, as we do that, we ask that you would heal the sick, that you would uh, give the peace that passes all the understanding to those that have lost loved ones. And I want to hold up my little niece, Christy, in prayer today. You know, she has a severe uh, infection in her body. And Father... She, did, she thought she was supposed to have surgery, but th th was going to have surgery, but they didn't. It was an infection. I pray that you would remove that and restore her, Father, as she battles continually with her health. Father, help her to be fully and completely healed and in your will, Father. And again, we ask that you would give 
all our day-by-day -day needs, and we praise you that you have continually did that for us. And Father, we also ask that as we go to your word today, Father, that you come and give us the words to say, and let it not be our words, but yours. Father, help us all to be circumcised of the heart, Father, that we would have that unction, that want to, that desire to do your, to keep your commandments, to guard your scriptures. Father, that it, it didn't, be, it didn't seem, uh, too hard, you know, that we would be, have that desire to do it and not just robotically keeping your commandments because that's the difference in the two covenants. We now have your spirit, your ruach dwelling in our hearts and have that to be our direction and help us to do your will. And again, we ask that you'd open hearts and minds and teach them what you'd have them to know and ourselves included in that, Father. And then we ask all that in, your, in our precious Messiah, our Hamashiach, Yahusha's name, or Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yep. Okay. Hope our mics are working. <laughs> It'd be a shame if they weren't. <laughs> Okay, uh, we got our new lapel mic, so if it sounds a little bit better, praise Yahuwah, okay? <clears throat> so we're going to kick this lesson off in Genesis chapter 17, mm -hmm. and we're going to read the whole chapter. Okay. Yeah. Try to break her down. Okay? Genesis chapter 17. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Yahuwah appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be be you blameless. So, you know, and when it says almighty in your English Bible, that's really like the mighty one, like El. Okay, mm -hmm. so and so you need they got El Shaddai in the Hebrew. Okay, but if you would look at that in, you would see that that's talking about the mighty one or the one and only mm -hmm. mighty one. And walk before him blameless. You're not going to be perfect in the flesh. Okay, but you can definitely be blameless if you're doing it by faith. Go ahead, brother. Verse two, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. And he's going to do that with us, too. Okay, if we have this circumcised heart. Go ahead, brother. And Abram fell on his face and Yahuwah talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. See, this is before he gets circumcision in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Abram's already saying, here I am. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, neither shall your name anymore be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you. See, this has already been fulfilled. He's made this promise, and he's mm -hmm. going to be a father of many nations. We too will receive a new name when we receive the Spirit in fullness. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6. And I will make you exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your seed after you, in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a mighty one unto you, and to your seed after, after you. Mm -hmm. And I will give unto you, and to your seed after you, the land wherein you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be there most be the most high. Okay, so every time you see the word seed in your English Bible, just think descendants. Descendants. Okay. Because that's what it's saying. He's talking about him and all his descendants, which is talking about the physical nation of Israel that doesn't exist mm -hmm. here yet. Okay? Right. And our Messiah ultimately, our Hamashiach, Yahusha. Go ahead. First thing. And Yahuwah said unto Abraham. You shall keep my covenant, therefore you and your seed after you and their generations. And that's no different for us. If we accept our, our Hamashiach and we mm -hmm. get covered by his blood, we have to accept this same covenant that was with Abraham and also the Davidic covenant that was offered to da King Dawid. Go ahead. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your seed after you. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And this is included in what we call the Torah or the law. Okay, so what he's saying here at this point, there will, you know, they needed to be physically circumcised as a sign to show that they were willing to come in. Okay, 
And today, if you're convicted to have circumcision, then circumcision should be received as a seal of, um, you know, excellence, okay? Or, or to show that you're part of the tribe of Israel. Covenant. Covenant. But that if you're not circumcised the heart, don't run out and get circumcised in the flesh because that's not going to do you a bit of good. Go ahead, brother. Right. Verse 11, And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in a house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of your seed. Or your descendants. Now, and, 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 and they accuse Paul, we're going to go through some of that, of being, or Shaul being uh, against circumcision. That's just not true. And if you are coming to the uh, tribe of Israel and you get circumcised, you would still circumcise your child on the eighth day. The covenant has not changed, okay? Go ahead, brother. Verse 13, He that is born of your house and he that is bought with your money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Again, a sign, a seal, a mark mm -hmm. that was set on Israel. Go ahead. And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is, is not circumcised, that life shall be called, uh, cut off from his people. He had broken my covenant. So the natural seed of Israel, okay, if they didn't do it, they were to be cut off in, at this point in mm -hmm. time. Okay, that, that's not the same now. But if you weren't circumcised of heart, it didn't do you any good. You're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven or the Shamayim, unless you're circumcised in the heart. Go ahead, brother. 15, And Yahuwah said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Yes, sir. And I will bless her and give, give you a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Now, these are the things that are promised to Abram, the man, okay? That doesn't happen for all of us, the same thing, okay? So, because it's spiritual now, it's not physical anymore. Go ahead. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear her? And Abraham said unto the Most High, You all oh, that Ishmael might live before you. <clears throat> and Yahuwah said, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. Now you notice how much emphasis is placed on Sarai here, or whatever proper Hebrew pronunciation there is of that. Uh, laughing, but if you noticed, he laughed too. Abram laughed, you know. I mean, think of it. If someone came to you and you were 99 or 100 years old, what would you do if they said you were going to bear a child? Go ahead, brother. Verse 20, and, and as for Ishmael, I have heard, heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall be beget and i will make him a great nation so we know the whole story you know hagar hagar she went out into the wilderness and and who gave her this special promise okay through ishmael and he also told abram the same thing but they weren't heirs to the promise by the flesh okay and we don't have to be grafted into ishmael or esau in order to receive the covenant, because that's a special promise that only come through the son Isaac yep. and then Jacob, okay, mm -hmm. or Israel. Go ahead, brother. 21, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto you at, the, at this set time in the next year. So she got a new name because she was. they were starting a new beginning. Go ahead, brother. 22, and he left off talking with him, and Yahuwah went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same self-same same day 
as Yahuwah has said unto him. So all the physical seed of Israel had, I mean, not Israel, but of Abram, needed to be circumcised. And he circumcised also Ishmael when he was 13 years old. And that was because of the commandment that the Most High gave. Okay? So that's why it's important. Go ahead, brother. 24. And Abraham was 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. And all the men of, the, of his house, born in the house and bought with money of, of the stranger, were circumcised with him. And, and you know, you think about that. Now, if Abram, if Yahuwah wouldn't have told Abram that he must be circumcised and all his kid, children, that circumcised heart is the reason why he got the covenant in the first place. And today, if you're not circumcised in the heart, you're not going to get in the kingdom of heaven. It's that simple. Okay? You're not, you're just not going. Okay? But let's say that you got circumcised, your, your heart was circumcised, and you come and you accept his covenant, and you died two weeks later. Do you think you won't be in the kingdom? Well, you absolutely will. Okay? So which is more important? Circumcision of the heart or circumcision in the flesh? Circumcision in the flesh is a physical mark to show you're part of Israel. Let's go to Genesis 21. 21, yep. Let's read a couple of verses here. Genesis chapter 21, verse 1. And Yahuwah visited Sarah as he had said, and Yahuwah did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which Yahuwah had spoken to him. Yes, sir. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Yes, sir. And Just Ab as he was commanded. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. And Abraham circumcised his son, Isaac, being eight days old, as Yahuwah had commanded him. Amen. Okay, now we'll go to Genesis that 26. That is a circumcised heart. You see mm -hmm. how he's faithfully keeping the commandments what, of the what, Most High? What God told him. He did. He did it. No questions asked. He did it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we're going to... Chapter 26. Okay. Read a couple of verses here. Okay, I'm here. Just setting the stage. Uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Ambalek, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And Yahuwah appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell of you. Now it's important to understand the, 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 embody, the real embodiment of Yahuwah is not what appeared to him. The Ruach or the Holy Spirit is what appeared to him. Okay, because we couldn't stand in the presence of the Most High. Okay, but you got to understand it's Yahuwah's spirit. Okay, so it's part of him. So that's what appeared to Abram. Go ahead, or to, uh, yep. yes, go ahead, brother. Verse 3, it says, Stay temporarily in this land, and I will be with you, mm -hmm. and I will bless you. For unto you and unto your seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. See, now he's, talk, he's talking about the physical nation of Israel, the land that we call Israel, which you have to read the coordinates, which they never fully received. And he says, stay temporarily here, okay? Because he didn't never see the promises come, okay? He lived his whole life, and he never saw it, okay? But by faith, Abraham kept the covenant that the Most High gave him. And so, go ahead, brother. Verse 4, And I will make, make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto your seed all these countries, and your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, Israel, he got a partial fulfillment of this when the Israel was multiplied when they were in, in the land of Egypt. Okay? And they become like that. They were so plenteous. Okay? But this is talking about not just the physical nation of Israel. This is talking about making him the father of all nations. 
And again, it's through the circumcision of the heart and not the flesh. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. See, it, it's by faith that Abraham kept the law, the Torah. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy. The second giving. See, a lot of people don't understand that the, they think that the New Testament something new. And really what it's doing is the blood of our Messiah sanctifying this second giving or the second covenant. Okay, It's a renewed covenant. Deuteronomy 10, Chapter 10 verse 12. It says, And now Israel, what does Yahuwah, thy Elohim, require of you but to fear the Most High and to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Mighty One with all your heart and with all your soul. To keep the commandments of Yahuwah and His statutes, which I command you this day for your good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven, heavens is the Lord thy God, and the earth also with all therein is. Okay, so let, let's break that down a little bit because mm -hmm. that can get confusing and tongue tying right. for anybody. He said, Behold, the heaven or the Shamayim, sing, sam, Shama, okay, and the Shamayim. So it's saying mm -hmm. the heaven and the heaven of heavens is Yahuwah your Elohim. The earth also belongs to him with all that's in it. That's talking about the descendants, the physical descendants of Abram and everybody else. Go ahead, brother. Only Yahuwah had a delight in your fathers to love him, and he chose their seed after them even you above all people as it is a state. Now, what does it mean by that? Because he offered the children of Israel, the opportunity, Israel, through Abraham in the flesh, the chance to be a kingdom of priests, a set apart or holy nation among all other no nations, but they didn't make the cut. Okay. So now that went out to the all nations to fulfill all these after and, it, and those people are going to be in the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Go ahead, brother. 16. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff necked. See, that's what you got to do. You got to do that. Okay. If you don't get circumcised in the heart, none of the other stuff you're going to be motivated to do. You got to have that unction, and that comes from the Ruach mm -hmm. or the Holy Spirit. At this time, they didn't have that dwelling in them, so they had to do it themselves. Okay, just like Abraham had to circumcise himself. Go ahead, brother. 17, for the Lord your God is a God of gods and a Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which reward, regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. See, because it has always been that way. It didn't have to go through the physical tribe or nation of Israel back to physically in Abraham because he's fulfilling a covenant to all nations through Abraham. Okay, he says, for Yahuwah your Elohim is the mighty one of mighty ones, plural. Okay, mm -hmm. and Yahuwah of our master of masters. Okay, a great El or mighty one. Mm -hmm. Okay, a mighty and terrible, which rewards not persons nor taketh reward. So yep. he's not a respecter of persons on just the physical seed. That also always went to anyone that was willing to join themselves to Israel and at that time be circumcised in the foreskin and take the Passover, which is not the same sacraments as we take when we take the sacraments on the Passover today. Go ahead, brother. 18. He does us execute the judgment of the fatherless and the widow and loveth the stranger and giving him food and raiment. And he still does that. So if you're trying to oppress the poor or you support the pressing of the poor, you're not keeping the covenant. Go ahead, brother. Love ye therefore the stranger, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. Yes, sir. You shall fear the Most High. Him shall you serve, and to him shall you cleave and swear by his name. And that is so important to understand, that we are strangers and sojourners are temporarily where we are in the world now. Where we're looking forward to that kingdom that's coming down out of the heavens, the Shamayim, mm -hmm. and that set-apart city where we're going to be citizens. That's what we're looking for. Go ahead, brother. He is your praise, and he is your mighty one. Amen. That have done for you these great and 
and all aspiring things which thine eyes have seen. See, we haven't seen all that yet, but we're going to see it either in the first resurrection, in the spirit, or we might even see it in our flesh if it happens here. So that's important to get. Okay, go ahead, brother. 22, last verse. Your fathers went down into Egypt with 70 persons, and now... Yahuwah has made you as the stars of heaven for yes, multitude. Yes, sir. And that's what I was talking about earlier. He partially fulfilled that. But can you imagine how much that is now when it comes through the Ruach and how the Spirit has been passed and passed? Okay, but it's still a lot fewer than yep. some things. Romans chapter 4. Romans, the fourth channel. Let's see what Paul or Shaul's got to say Romans about chapter 4. Anybody that thinks he's a false prophet, they need to read their scriptures. Again, he was of the tribe of Benjamin, and he was the Pharisee mm. of Pharisees taught by the great Gamaliel. Go ahead, brother. Okay, Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? So he's talking to the physical nation of Israel here, okay? For if Abraham were justified by works, he has wherefore the glory, but not before the Most High. Okay, so Abraham, if it would have just been by works, he wouldn't have anything. To, he would have something to brag about. But it's not. It's by his faith. Go ahead, brother. But what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed the Mighty One, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Hallelujah. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So in other words, we owe a debt because of him allowing us in his covenant to keep it. Okay, but if you just did it by the works, again, it would be a debt and mm -hmm. not by faith. Go ahead, brother. Verse 5, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And just like Father Abraham, okay? But when he when when Yahuwah said, do this, do that, as we read, okay? Even to the point of offering his own son Isaac through the promises were supposed to come through, he was ready to follow him. It wasn't by the deeds, it was by his faith. When when the, the messenger, the Moloch, saw that he was ready to offer his son, his only son, on the altar, he said, don't touch him. It's not necessary for you to complete those works. I see your faith. Go ahead, brother. Verse 6, even as David also describes the blessedness of the man who, unto whom Yahuwah imputed uh, or credits righteousness without works. Amen. See, it's not the doing of the works that's getting you there. It's the faith. But, it, but if you don't do the works because you don't want to do the works, then where's the faith? Okay, because faith without works is dead. Go ahead, brother. Saying divinely favored are th are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Okay, what are they covered by today? By your, by the shed blood of our Hamashiach Yahusha. Back then, it was goats and bulls that never truly took away those sins. The father, when Messiah died, that blood covered those ones that were righteous back there. That that blood did go ahead, that they shed then go ahead brother. Verse eight: Blessed is the man whom Yahuwah Yahuwah will not credit sin. See, because if you go, when Don't we go sin. to the it, it, let's say you're not you didn't in the first resurrection, but when you went there and the Father said go ahead into the kingdom, see that blood still covered your past sins, and He didn't count them because none of us was without sin. We all fall short of the mark, and unless your sins are covered you're going to end up going in a lake of fire. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, cometh this blessedness upon the circumcision only, or Israel, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned or counted to Abraham for righteousness. And, and, it, and it was, because how did he receive mm -hmm. that? By his circumcised heart, and then he circumcised his foreskin. Go ahead, brother. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision? or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. So he was counted as righteous because mm -hmm. he said, Here I am, and followed those commandments. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all the, of them that believe. Though they not be circumcised, 
that righteousness might be credited unto them also. Real, listen real closely what what Paul said there. That is so mm -hmm. important when you understand it. He says, and he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of his righteousness so that they would know that he had... Right. He, he did that himself, guys. Think of it, a full-grown man, not only getting circumcised, but taking a knife and doing it to himself. See, that was a sign or a seal of righteousness, of Amen. faith, which he had been yet being uncircumcised. That He had to have that faith to do that. Yes, sir. Okay? That he might be faith, fought the father of all them that believe. None of us are going to be father of them that all believe. Okay? Through that, though they not be not circumcised, that righteousness might be counted unto them also. Go ahead, brother. There's 12. And a father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who, who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had yet being yet uncircumcised. And that's the faith we got to walk in. The faith he showed mm -hmm. in everything he did. Amen. That's not talking about just being circumcised in the flesh. Not at all. Go ahead, brother. 13, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. In other words, just being, you know, robotically keeping the Torah, doing what he commanded, mm. and you know we're not any of us going to keep that perfectly because we're in the flesh, okay? If that's all they did, but their heart wasn't in it, in other words, it was oppressive to them to, to attend on the Sabbath, just an example, or to go down to Jerusalem for the feasts, okay? They went, but it was with the whole heart. That don't mean anything to the Most High, any more than anything else. You've got to be circumcised of heart. Go ahead, brother. Verse 14, For if they which are of the Torah be heirs, faith is made void. Or and, worthless. And the promise made of none effect. Hallelujah. Because... Where because the Torah works wrath, where, where there is no Torah is, there is no transgression. So what he say? Where there was no right ruling written down, then there's no transgression. If faith would have came by that, then you wouldn't have had an opportunity because every man sins and falls right. short of the mark. It's so under so important to understand. You have to be keeping it by faith. For it means nothing. Go ahead, brother. 16. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace yes, to the sir. end of the promise that might be sure to all the seed, not to that which only which is of the law or the Torah, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. And we got to understand this thoroughly. When he was talking to those that had the Torah, he was talking to the nation of Israel. And those people and the Jews at that time or Judas, what they call Benjamin and all those that were there and living in that area. And so he's saying those that had the law being them, but to also, which is of the faith of Abraham, he's talking about the nations, the Gentiles that were being grafted in. Go ahead, brother. 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Hallelujah. Before him whom he believed. Even the Most High, who makes alive the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Think about what this is saying. See, so this whole thing, see, not just to his descendants, his physical descendants alone, but to all nations. Okay. As it is written, I have made you, Abraham, a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even Elohim, okay, mm -hmm. who rose the dead including our Messiah, our Hamashiach, and cause those things which be not as though they were. In other words, that's the prophesy. It comes from Elohim through the Ruach. Go ahead, brother. 18, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. Your descendants be. Because of that faith he had, we mm -hmm. all got that opportunity. Go ahead. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So you think about it. He did laugh, and so did Sarah. 
but he believed it and he received that promise. Okay, that's the faith. Go ahead, brother. Verse 20, he or Abraham staggered not at the promise of the mighty one through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to the mighty one. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And being fully persuaded that while of and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So that was it. That he truly believed that Yahuwah was able to do anything he said, and that's why he obeyed him, because he wanted to be pleasing in his sight, mm -hmm. not just robotically doing the Torah. Go ahead, brother. Point two, and therefore it was counted to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. Now it was, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was counted to him, or credited to him. Mm -hmm. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed or counted. Yes, sir. If we believe on him, the Most High, that raised up Jesus or Yahushua, our Messiah, from the dead. Amen. And see, that's that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. so, see, that Holy Spirit, that Ruach HaKadosh, the Father Yahuwah said, have it be done, and the Ruach did the work, just like in the beginning. Go ahead, brother. 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Ha hallelujah. Okay, Acts chapter 15. Now let's see here. Acts 15. We're going to start in verse 1. Do 21. Yep. Right? It says, And a certain men which came down from Judea a, uh, and a taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. See, that's not a true statement because if for some reason you didn't do the circumcision, but you truly were circumcised in heart, you're still getting in. But if you didn't, and that's what Paul's emphasizing, Shaul's emphasizing. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas had cert had, and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Yes, sir. And being brought on their way by, by the ecclesia, they passed through uh, Phoenicia. And Samaria de declaring the conversation of the nations, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. So, in other words, you know, they knew that it was in the Torah that everybody had to be circumcised in the flesh. Okay? So, there was a lot of disputes going back and forth between Paul and Barnabas. And what Paul was trying to emphasize is that they didn't have to physically themselves be circumcised, they first had to be circumcised to heart. And the mm. flesh is not going to help if you're not circumcised in the heart. So they went up to Jerusalem for the answer. But on the way, they passed they, their way by the ecclesia, okay, which is the called out ones or the congregation. They passed through Phoenicia, is where the Phoenicians lived, which were many people of Semitic descent or Israel, okay, and Samaria, declaring the con the conversion of the nations. And they caused great joy among all the brethren because the other nations are being grafted into Israel. Go ahead, brother. For and when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the of the ecclesia or assembly and of the apostles and elders, mm -hmm. and they declared all things that Yahuwah had done with them. Amen. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep, command them to keep the law of Moses. Yeah, and we're going to continue through this. And mm -hmm. We're going to see where, yeah, there's, they're right. They're correct. There's a commandment in the law of Moses or the Torah. And Moses didn't write the Torah. Moses rewrote the Torah after he broke them on Mount Sinai because the children rebelled. Okay? So, but Yahuwah, Wrote them with his own finger, not just the ten. You'd study it out for yourself. A lot of people disagree with me. I don't care. It says the law, and the Torah, and the commandments, more than one place. Okay? So, you, yes, it's needful for them. 
But he's going to tell you when it's needful for them. Go ahead, brother. Six, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Yes, sir. And when there had been much dis disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know not, you know how that a good while ago, Yahuwah made yes, choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And we know that Yahushua told him that before he ascended. Okay, go ahead, brother. And you and Yahuwah, which knows the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. See how important it is to understand these Greek words? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, anybody that has questions, make sure you get, you know, get a hold of us. And we're available, philadelphiaassemblies at gmail.com. Okay, but we're, you make comments in the comments section below, and we'll be glad to get back to you on any of these things and give you help in that area if you want to understand the Greek words and how they are pronounced and the reason why we say what word we say. Okay, so in verse 8 it says, and Yahuwah, because it's the Theos, mm -hmm. okay, says, which knows the hearts, bear them witness. So who knows them? The Father. Why did Messiah know their thoughts? Because he had that Ruach living in him, and so he knew their thoughts because of the Father, of the Father unity. Yeah. Giving yep. them to the, and it says, giving them the Spirit or the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh, even as he did unto us. No difference between Yehudim and Gentiles or nations. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Wait a minute. No difference. And I mean that's true anyway, and it doesn't have anything to do with who teaches who or anything else. There is no difference between you, you of Yehuda and Gentiles. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10, Now therefore, why tempt ye the Most High, and put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor were able to bear? See, and it's obvious that we know that uh, Silas and different ones and, and mm -hmm. Timothy, they, their, you know, their fathers were Greeks. Okay, so how in the world are we going to say that we can only teach and thus we're part of the physical seed? Go ahead, brother. 11, but we believe that through the grace of our representative, Yahushua, the anointed one, we shall be saved even as they. Yes, sir. And he's talking about the Gentiles or the nations will be saved even as Yisrael. Go ahead, brother. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul declaring what mir miracles and wonders Yahuwah had wrought among the nations by them. Amen. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Now, James here, uh, here is brother, and it would be Jacob in Hebrew, okay? He's brother of Yahushua our Messiah, our Hamashiach. Go ahead, brother. S Simeon had declared how Yahuwah at first did visit the Gentiles to, to take the, out of them a people for his name. Yeah, and that's going to talk about with Abraham, mm -hmm. okay? Because Abraham was a Gentile, okay? And then he was grafted. He, he become going to make him a great nation. He didn't start as one. Go ahead, brother. And to this agree, uh, the words of the prophets, yes, sir. as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. And he's talking about the kingdom when he's talking about the tabernacle of David, mm -hmm. because remember, David didn't get to build a temple. His son Solomon did because he had too much blood on his hands. Mm -hmm. so, but that promise that he made that there would always be his descendant on the throne, that's the Davidic or uh, Dawidic covenant. Okay, go ahead, brother. 17, that the residue of men might seek after the Most High, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. All the Gentiles upon whom his name is called. Go ahead, brother. Saith Yahuwah, who, who does all these things. Amen. It says, known unto Yahuwah are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to the Most High. See, now I'm, I'm going to correct this because you need to go to the Greek. We're not going to do yeah. that here. But the word turning, I mean turned, that they translated in the English Bible should have been, they were turning. That meant they were, try, they were starting right. to move towards the Most High. Right. But they hadn't fully done that. 
And that's because they didn't have the Torah yet. Okay, they were starting to do it. And he, they're not going to have them do anything other than these few things to begin with mm -hmm. because the Torah would be taught in the synagogues, which is just like the assembly oh. we have right here every Sabbath day. And if you're circumcised of heart, you're going to start performing those things because you want to be pleasing to the Most High. It's not the keeping of those things, but the desire to do them Amen. that converts us. Go ahead, bro. 20, but that we write unto them that they abstain from the pollutions of idols. And that's talking about eating things sacrificed to idols to begin with because they did that as part of their religious beliefs to these pagan idols. Go ahead, brother. From fornication. Yes, sir. And from things strangled and from blood. So in other words, they weren't, and that's not talking about, you know, washing your hamburger thoroughly. Okay, so you know that. They're, in pagan tradition, they literally drank blood of certain animals like tigers and things because they thought that gave them power because the life's in the blood. Everybody knows that, okay? The power and the life's mm -hmm. in the blood. And he said, to things from things strangled. That's talking about torn by beast, and that's quoting the Torah. And he said, from blood, okay? From drinking blood. Go ahead, brother. 21, for Moses of old time has in every city them that pre preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. See, that's the whole point here. See, they, 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 you have to be circumcised of heart. You can't force the Torah on somebody or the commandments because those commandments and that Torah are the condition of the covenants of promise, the covenant to, Ab the covenant mm -hmm. to Abraham and Dawid. And they, all these were mentioned here. Okay. Galatians chapter 2. This will wrap it up with this chapter. Galatians chapter 2. Mm -hmm. we're, we're doing all right. Actually, we're doing pretty good on time for us. <laughs> Galatians, chapter Galatians chapter 2. Okay, yeah, go, go forward more. Oh, okay. Back this way. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> I thought you meant the other way. It got me confused. Okay. Galatians chapter 2. Yep. Verse 1 says, Then fourteen years after I went up again again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, I took Titus with me also. Okay, we're setting the stage here. And we're talking about, this is Paul here, yes, Paul sir. speaking here. Verse 2, And I went up by, up by revelation and communicated unto them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles or the nations, but privately to them which were of the reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. In other words, he said, unless I did this for nothing. Okay, go ahead. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Now, you, let's start learning linguistics here, okay? Because mm -hmm. there's, there's, a, there's a problem here, and that's what we people don't understand about circumcision. It says, but neither. That's the key word. Mm -hmm. Okay, neither Titus or... Yeah, was compelled to be circumcised because who I because he's Greek because his father's a Greek was compelled to be circumcised so he wasn't convicted right he wasn't circumcised of heart yet in that area okay so he wasn't ready to do that because you have to be compelled mm -hmm. by the Torah because you want to be pleasing to the Most High yep. or circumcision is nothing just like anything else. Go ahead, Verse brother. 4, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came and privately despiled our liberty, which we have in Christ, Yahushua, or Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. See, because you are at liberty until you know, because Paul also said, or Shaul, that we're not measured by what we don't know, but rather why we do know. So until you learn and you're convicted on something, no, don't do it. Go ahead, brother. Five, to whom we have, we, we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with, with you. So the truth of the gospel, the bezoar, is very important. And it, what is it? We were reading it. It's by faith, okay, or by favor through belief. Go ahead, brother. But of these who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. Yes, Yahuwah sir. accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in con conference added nothing to me. You know, and I feel the same way with a lot of people. You know, they go wielding around the Torah like it's a knife or a sword. You know, it makes no difference to me. 
because it's Yahuwah that I'm trying to please. And if I am fully convicted in one area, unless the word of Yahuwah convicts me to change, I will remain on that until the day I die. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7, but contrary wise... Or just when, the opposite. Yeah, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Now, what is he talking about? Well, because the when Messiah left, he, he, he looked at Peter and he said, he, he asked him to go to all the nations because he made him like a pillar in the church. Mm -hmm. Okay? But he, all, he said, if you can't do anything else, feed my sheep. He said that three times. He was talking about the lost tribes of, of Israel. And when it was proven that he didn't, there were still 12 apostles, okay? Mm -hmm. They were already sent out one to each of every nation, okay? Because Matthias was the one that replaced uh, uh, Judas, okay? Or Yehuda, okay? And then uh, the Messiah called Shaul out of season and in the wilderness and blinded him and then opened his eyes. So that's when he was called to the apostle to the nations. Okay, so that's what this is talking about here. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, For he that worked effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Or the uncircumcised, the nations mm -hmm. that were, didn't have the Torah. They had to turn to the Torah. See, that's like when we're, we're quoting the psalm, that says those that you know turn their self away or their face away from hearing the Torah, even their their prayers are an abomination. That's not people that don't have the Torah. That's people that know the Torah, okay, and decide I don't want to do it. It's too grievous. I don't want to do it. Go ahead, brother. Verse nine. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave it to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen or the Gentiles. Yes, sir. And they unto the circumcision. See, so let, let's understand what we're talking about here. James or Jacob, okay, was the brother of Messiah and he was the head of the what of their the Christian, we'll say, or the followers of Yahusha, okay? He was the head of that Sanhedrin. Okay, and then he said Cephas, which he's talking about Peter, as we very well know, and Johann, which seemed to be pillars. They were. They were pillars of the congregation, perceived the grace that was given to Shaul, okay, to go to the nations. They recognized it, and, the, and it, that they gave to me and to Barnabas, okay, the right hands of, fe of fellowship that we should go to the nations to the uncircumcised, and, and, and help them to be converted. And they, unto the circumcision. Notice how he used that circumcision for the physical nation. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10, Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was anxious to do. So in other words, remember the Torah. At least, re, you know, stay on that. Even though you're not requiring them all the things of the Torah until their heart is pricked, to keep the Torah. Go ahead, brother. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the to the face yes, because sir. he was to be blamed. He was to be blamed because he he caused the uh, people to walk. He walked away from the Gentiles, and that's why he blamed him. And that's the reason for Shaul in the first place. Go ahead, brother. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself. Fearing them which were of the circumcision. He was fearing of rejection to being kicked out of the synagogue. See, so he, he so Paul or Shaul recognized that he wasn't going to be able to keep that promise. Okay? And that's why Shaul was appointed to it. Go ahead, brother. 13, and, and the other Jews dis dissembled likewise with him, in, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their hypocrisy. So because, you know, the, he, he just followed them away, okay, which wasn't cool at all. They should have stayed there with the Gentiles that they were trying to convert. Go ahead, brother. But when I saw that they walked on uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if you being a Jew live as after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compel us you the Gentiles to live as the Jews? 
In other words, while they're still Gentiles, while they're not converted, while they're not right. part of the commonwealth of Israel, why would you push that on them? They've got to, you've got to do this by faith. Everything we do has got to be by belief, and that's going to be counted to us as righteousness. If you do it because somebody fosters it on you, no good. Go ahead, brother. 15, who, we who are the Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. In other words, why? Why does he use that verbiage? Because they knew the Torah and they obeyed the Torah and the Gentiles didn't know better. Right. Okay, go ahead. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the Torah. Yes, sir. But by the faith of Jesus, or Yahushua, the anointed one, even we have believed in Yahushua, the Messiah, that we might be justified by faith of Christ. Yes, sir. And not by the works of the Torah, for by the works of the Torah shall no flesh be justified. And he's quoting Psalms 143, verse mm -hmm. 2 there, guys. Now, yes, listen is. to this a little bit. He says, knowing that man is not justified by the Torah, that's Strong's Concordance number 35, 3,551. And that's Torah. Look it up. That's what it means. Okay? So, faith of Yahushua, the anointed one. Now, in uh, Revelation chapter 14, it says that we, the patience of the saints, is those that keep the commandments of the Most High and have the faith of Yahushua, the yep. anointed one. So, if you're not doing it by faith as he's doing it, you're not doing it. Go ahead, brother. 17. But while we seek to be justified by Christ, Amen. we ourselves also are found sinners. Excuse me. Is therefore Christ a minister of sin? May it never be. No, what do you mean? He says, but if while we seek to be justified by the blood of Messiah, okay, we ourselves also are found sinners. What does he mean? We're still committing sins. See, it's not just the ones they point out. The Torah, if you had to, if you were held to account of every infraction on there, everybody breaks mm -hmm. them every day. Okay, he says, if therefore the anointed one, the minister of sin, is he saying it's okay to sin? May it never be. Go ahead, bro. Eighteen. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Now, how did he destroy the sin? He did it by the Torah, but he did it by justifying and do, wanting to be pleasing in the Most High. See, Paul wasn't converted until those scales came off his eyes. When Messiah called him out and, and, and blinded him and put him down to his feet, and he knew who it was, he told him his name and who he was. After that, he had faith because he truly believed and understood that he was the Messiah that came to take away the sins of the world or cover the sins of the world. So go ahead, brother. 19, for I through the Torah am dead to the Torah, that I might live unto the mighty one. Now what do you mean? He says, for I through keeping the Torah am dead to the Torah. How's, what do you mean? Because I'm keeping it, I'm not, I'm not sinning. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm dead to the penalty of the Torah, that I might live to who? And to the mighty one, Yahuwah, to live for him. That's the point. Go ahead, brother. 20, I am crucified with Christ. Yes, Nevertheless, sir. I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of Elohim, who loved me and gave himself for me. So he's holding himself continually to the same standard that our Messiah did, which was the Torah, but not for the keeping of the Torah or recognition of men. But because of the son of Elohim, Yahushua, he was being like him as best he could because he, he knew that the Father told him. He, I'm sure he heard that, the, that when that said, this is my son and whom I'm well pleased. See, that's why we keep the Torah, because we want to be his son, and we want to be well-pleasing in his sight. Go ahead, brother. Last, uh, last verse, I do not frustrate the grace of Elohim. Hallelujah. For if righteousness came by the Torah, then Christ is dead and vain. Amen. Hallelujah. And hopefully someone understands what this is all about. Amen. We can, we're not going to get circumcised in the flesh. And unless we're doing that as a seal of our righteousness. Amen. And you're the only one can be compelled to do that. Someone else compels you, it's not going to mean anything. So 
that's what's important to understand. And it's no different with any law in the Torah. Okay. If we're not doing it because we know that we're going to be hear that. I'm well pleased in you. I, I, good and faithful servant. Go ahead into the kingdom. It's not going to be that way. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Philadelphia Assemblies, please do so. And if you have or not, and you like this video, give it a thumbs up on the YouTube page. Share it to your Facebook page if you want. Okay, and then don't forget to hit that notification bell. And may Yahuwah bless until we meet again. Shalom. Shalom.